With our current global climate crisis, is Tesla really making a difference? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. So the burning of fossil fuels for transportation and energy generation really causes two big problems, CO2 greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. So first, let's talk about greenhouse gases. The common greenhouse gases that we find in our environment are carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. And the main one we're going to talk about in this video is carbon dioxide. When more of these gases are added to our atmosphere, it causes what's referred to as a greenhouse effect, meaning it traps more heat in our atmosphere and causes a rising of temperatures. The rising of temperatures caused by these greenhouse gases in our atmosphere lead to more intense storms, more hurricanes, and more extreme weather rising sea levels, droughts, the melting of our ice caps, and can have a big effect on our environment as a whole. The second big problem caused by the burning of fossil fuels is, of course, air pollution. According to the EPA, quote, air pollution emitted from transportation contributes to smog and poor air quality, which has negative impacts on the health and welfare of U.S. citizens. Pollutants that contribute to poor air quality include particulate matter, nitrogen oxides, and volatile organic compounds. Also, according to the EPA, in 2017, the transportation sector was responsible for 29% of all greenhouse gas emissions. You'll see also there that electricity generation was also very high at 28% of the greenhouse gas emissions in that year. And we're not going to spend any time talking about solar and electric generation in this video, but we will in a future video. In this video, I just want to talk about the transportation sector. So now that we've established the problem of greenhouse gas emissions, the rising of temperatures, and also the toxic air pollution, let's talk about how much of an impact Tesla is really having on reducing these. So according to the EPA, every gallon of gasoline burned creates about 8,887 grams of CO2. If you drive a gas-burning vehicle that averages 50 miles per gallon, obviously that would be some kind of hybrid, and you drive 12,000 miles per year, you will have consumed 240 gallons of fuel. Based on the EPA's calculation, this would mean you should emit somewhere around 2,132,880 grams of CO2 in a year. Or if you average somewhere around 25 miles per gallon and drive the same 12,000 miles per year, you will have burned 480 gallons of fuel and emitted 4,265,760 grams of CO2. So according to the EPA, and this data is assuming 22 miles per gallon and somewhere around 11,500 miles per year, a typical passenger vehicle emits somewhere around 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. It is estimated that there are somewhere around 1 billion vehicles on the roads globally. So this equates to somewhere around 4.6 billion metric tons of CO2 per year from transportation. Now, what kind of impact has Tesla had on the CO2 emissions? According to a Tesla website, which I'll link to in the description below, the total CO2 saved by Tesla since 2008 is somewhere around 3,565,004 tons of CO2 saved. Now, for a little perspective of how this compares to the global market, we see that between the years of 2008 and 2019, Tesla sold 901,461 vehicles. That is somewhere around 0.09% of the 1 billion vehicles on the road today. If we examine just 2019, Tesla sold 367,500 vehicles, which equates to 0.56% of global sales. Now, while these numbers may seem kind of small when you compare it to the global scale and the amount of gas-burning vehicles currently on the road, I want to show how Tesla is having a larger impact than these numbers appear to show. First of all, I want to look at the potential growth of Tesla over the next few years. So in 2019, as I mentioned, Tesla sold 367,500 vehicles. And if you multiply this by the 4.6 metric tons per vehicle per year that the EPA estimates, that's somewhere around 1.6 million metric tons of potential CO2 savings added in one year. And keep in mind that these 367,000 plus vehicles will be on the road for 10 plus years, so this number of course compounds. By the end of 2022, I estimate that Tesla should be able to deliver somewhere over 1 million cars per year, and that would add another 4.6 million metric tons of potential savings in that year alone. If we examine Tesla's total global fleet by the end of 2022, 
I assume that there will be over 3 million Teslas on the road globally, thus saving 14,766,000 metric tons of CO2 in a single 12-month period. So not only is Tesla growing at a very intense rate, but I want to examine the Tesla effect and show how Tesla is having a larger impact than the numbers show. So one of the ways we can measure the Tesla effect is to look at the number of electric vehicles available in 2008 versus what is available here in 2020. So in the United States in 2008, there was really only one electric vehicle available, and that was the Tesla Roadster. And here we are today in 2020, and in the USA, there are 14 battery electric vehicles available. And if you count the Model Y, which should be coming out in the coming months, that would mean 15 battery electric vehicles available. Because of Tesla's success in the electric vehicle market, other auto manufacturers are bringing out more EVs every year. And of course, that's good news for the environment. Another way that in the future Tesla is going to have a larger impact than just the numbers show is their entry into the commercial trucking industry with the Tesla Semi. So according to the Advanced Technology Institute, the average small business semi-truck driver can cover over 125,000 miles per year. And big rig engines are approximately six times larger than passenger car engines. And according to the Aero Truck website, on average, semi trucks get around 6.5 miles per gallon of diesel. The EPA has set up a standard where you can calculate the greenhouse gas emissions of a semi, and the greenhouse gas emissions equal the distance times the weight times the specific emissions factor. So here's the example they gave on the website. If a semi were to drive 1,000 miles with 20 tons of cargo, you could calculate it as follows. First of all, determine the total amount of ton miles. If you multiply 1,000 miles times 20 tons of cargo, that gives us a total of 20 ton miles. The second step is to get the weight-based truck emissions factor for a freight truck. The average freight truck in the U.S. emits somewhere around 161.8 grams of CO2 per ton mile. The third step is to multiply this emissions factor with the total ton miles, so 161.8 times 20,000 gives us a total of 3,236,000 grams of CO2. The fourth step is to convert the total grams into metric tons, and so if we convert this over, that gives us 3.24 metric tons of CO2 just for this one move. So when you compare that to the average passenger vehicle emitting somewhere around 4.6 metric tons of CO2 per year, just this one single 1,000 mile trip with a semi could potentially get close to that 4.6 with the 3.24 metric tons of CO2. So a semi truck drives somewhere around 10 times the miles per year of the average passenger vehicle and is about four times less efficient when talking about the miles per gallon. And so that combines to somewhere around a 40 times combined increase of CO2 emissions when you compare a semi to a passenger vehicle. Another way to measure the impact that Tesla is having is to look at how they've been pushing technology forward. It all started in 2008 with the Tesla Roadster, which was the first production car using lithium ion batteries. Then they designed the Model S, which was built on a skateboard design, which people are just now copying because of its efficiency and keeping the weight low to the ground. They built Gigafactory Nevada to produce the 2170 cells found in battery storage and also the Model 3 and upcoming Model Y cars. And when they built this factory, a lot of people thought it was kind of crazy, but they knew they would need these batteries in the future. And this has helped spur more battery factories now where we are here in 2020. Tesla vehicles have also raised the standard for the amount of range and the efficiency of an electric vehicle, giving us a lot longer range vehicles than I believe we would have had. Tesla is also pushing forward battery technology, and I believe Tesla is about to have a big battery breakthrough, which we'll hear more about at the Battery Investor Day because of the Maxwell acquisition and some of the other projects they're working on. One thing that supports my opinion here is that if you look at the price of the Cybertruck and you compare that with the miles of range and the features that you get, it becomes really obvious that there has to be some kind of breakthrough for the batteries if they're going to be able to produce that much vehicle for that low of price. 
One other factor within this Tesla effect that's not as measurable, but I believe it is just as important, is that Tesla has made electric cars desirable even to non-environmentally conscious people. So in conclusion, Tesla is having a bigger impact than the numbers seem to show. In 2019, Tesla sold 78% of the United States electric vehicle market and 18.9% of the global electric vehicle market. And although compared to the 1 billion registered vehicles on the roads today, we still have a long way to go, Tesla is having a large impact on the EV market because of the things we talked about. We didn't even examine the energy generation and battery backup systems that Tesla is also deploying and how that is saving CO2 from the environment, but we'll talk about that in a future video. And in the end, even though that Tesla is making a big impact, we need big auto manufacturers like Toyota, GM, VW, Ford, and Honda to step up and make some really compelling EVs to get where we need to be. Tesla cannot do it alone, and they never intended to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and that you enjoyed it. If you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button so more people can find the video. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, click the bell icon so you can be notified when new videos are published. Thank you so much.